it's it's a great experience i i'm like i, I you, if you guys haven't figured it out by now i'm pretty good accepting of everything that happens around me so uh, i wouldn't be the man i am today without going through that and having that global perspective and understanding of the differentiation between individuals and how they perceive things and i'm just blessed for it because that it allows me the ability to connect with people on multiple levels, uh, whether it's players or people I come in contact with on a daily basis. I'm blessed because of the experience. And I, I, I one wholeheartedly embrace it. Uh, honestly, like I said, it's it's all a blessing. I, I, you know, you look about things in your life, and I think that this goes for everyone. You think, well, if this wouldn't happen, maybe if this could have happened. But every road I traveled, every path I took, every step I took, brought me to me sitting here with you right now. Uh, you change one thing, and I'm not here. I wouldn't have had the experience I had yesterday. I wouldn't have had all the things that happened and the blessings in my life. So I embrace each and every one of those things to the fullest. And I do think that I'm, I, I don't for one moment discount the blessings I've been able to receive in my life. Um, you know, even when you think about if this wouldn't have happened, uh, maybe I would have been in the NBA and this and that. But you know what? I am a better man because of the road I took. And I'm, I'm very proud of everything I've done. And uh, even my faults I'm proud of because still I learned lessons from them. But my travels have made me the man I am and given me the global perspective I have on life individuals in this uh, i mean you ask me questions now that quite frankly go way outside the realm of basketball you know i i connect with people on a completely different level because of my experience and understanding of the commonalities of all of us on a global level yeah we obviously put a lot of focus on having all the players back and what that does to your rotation in games how has it changed practices are you guys able to do things differently or do more things well, we haven't had a lot of practices. As you can imagine with our schedule, there's not a whole lot we can get done. So, um, and we still have had, even though we've had people come back, it's still a slow drip in and we've had people out as we've dripped them back in. So we're just now getting to the point where we have a full roster during practice, but at the same time, we're at a point where the games are something coming so fast that it doesn't really give us a chance to get uh, uh, too much done at practice so it's really just about teaching from the last game to move forward to the next game a lot of that just is film um, cleaning up some things on the court for sure but um it, it, i will say it's probably the easiest time is during practice because you have to play five on five so that's already 10 people right there so uh it's, it's a little bit easier in that aspect Any questions for coach on Zoom? No. Ooh, looks like we got one from Neil. We'll take it. Hey, coach, just overall, you know, was there maybe one person or one thing that really struck out to you yesterday that you're still kind of taken aback by? Oh, I, I mean, I could go down the line and tell you great things about everybody. I think TB in particular, Thomas Bryan, I think he did one heck of a job when he came in, just bringing energy and changing the, the, um, changing the game. Same thing with Montrez when he came in, quite frankly. But I think everyone did a great job. I think Brad, his numbers may not reflect it, but what he did on the court was super, uh, super for what we needed. He made the right passes, made the right decisions, made shots when we need to him. Uh, Pope. Same thing. Amazing job. I think Spencer did a great job. Uh, like I said, I go down the line. I think everyone that came in contributed in a positive way. Um, so if you were to ask me what's the MVP of the game, uh, I would say the Wizards. <laughs> um, actually, Coach, uh, based off your international experience, what's been your advice to international players in the NBA that you've come across if and when they've ever been homesick for us? Whenever they long for being home. No one's ever asked me. I'll be, I'll be honest with you. I can tell you that I, I've had more so the 
converse question where Americans are going to play overseas and they asked me about that. And, I, and the best thing I can always say is the same thing. What, what helped me was when you look for America in another country, you're not going to find it. That's not America. And I, and I don't say that to be boisterous of America, but I will say if you're looking for Italy in Minneapolis, you're not going to find it. It's not, it's Minneapolis. So to understand and embrace the culture surrounding you, uh, that's the best thing you can do to get away from your, uh, I don't want to say homesickness because you're still going to, homesickness is homesickness. And quite frankly, it's a, it's a beautiful sickness to have because that means you have such a fond feeling about where you're from that it's ingrained in your heart and soul. And that's a beautiful thing. But the, the only thing to do with that is also fill up your heart with things that are in the moment where you are. And that's the best thing you can do. Find things that you love about where you are. And that changes everything. And again, you, you talk about players and I can't help but to answer a life question. If my kids ask me what to do when they're feeling homesick, I would tell them the exact same thing. And it has nothing to do with sports or you know anyone that's moved here for work. I don't know if you guys are all from here, but if you moved here from work and you're homesick, what's the best thing you can do? Embrace where you are. Find something you love about the moment where you are. And that's... Uh, the best remedy for that type of sickness, in my opinion. You guys have all your players back now for the first time this season, and you had apparently played well to stay in the rotation. What does that kind of mean to you and, and uh, about the way you play them? Well, it means it just means I'm doing the right things. I mean, um, the first half of the season is all about finding what works for you and um, getting into a rhythm and a routine. And um, I guess just getting on the floor last night was a validation that I'm taking the right steps and doing the right things. You know, it's far from, you know, an ending. Like I, there's still so much more work to be done. And I, mean, I don't think any on this, anybody on this, on this team is satisfied. So um, plenty of work left to be done, but it's just a little pat on the back along the way. And last night, I think you made a three on the opposite end of the court. You came back and you were kind of nodding your head to the bench. Like it seemed like veterans were maybe saying something to you. Um, what kind of things do you hear from them? Words of encouragement, advice, or maybe? How, yeah, it's been that? yeah, it's been all positive from all the veterans, and they've been you know nothing but great for me. Um, whether it's learning on the fly or being in my ear um, during timeouts or whatever, um, I tend to be really tough on myself, and those guys see that and they're there to pick me up. Um, you know, everybody from Brad to Pope to Trez, Coos, all those guys have been super positive with me and. So when I have a little bit of a, um, you know, a hot streak going, they're going to feed that fire. So um, they're just hyping me up along the way, and you know the coaches do the same. Jordan, how is uh, the way either your pregame routine or the work you get in in practice or in the gym or anything like that? How has that evolved throughout the course of the season? Um, no, I mean that's I think that's the beauty of it is it hasn't really changed much at all. Um, you know, maybe I've toned it back a little bit as I've been playing more minutes. Um, just to kind of preserve my legs for the you know time that matters the most, which is the games. But um, that's the beauty of you know the work is that it you know it never changes and never stops. You don't want to overreact. The, the season's so long, so um, there's plenty of time to self-correct and change course. And you know if you want to do a little bit more of this here, do a little bit less of, less of that there. But you know, far I mean altogether, it hasn't really changed much. You know, it's about coming in and doing the same thing over and over again and being consistent. You know whether you score twenty or you don't play a minute. Um, in Orlando, I know Henry Coos did stay in the bench and watch your his like first class fan face or like reaction when things happen. Has that always? I didn't. I didn't get to watch much of Gonzaga. Gonzaga. Has that always been been your thing? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah, no. Um, little known fact about me: I was actually I took an improv class in, in high school. <laughs> So I got the uh, facial expressions down. Yeah, I carried it with me. Yeah, Mrs. McArdle did a great job. Um, so yeah, it's it's just uh, her work showing through me. What do you think has worked particularly well for you on the court lately? That now? Yeah, it's just keeping it simple. You know, I know I'm not going to lead the team in shot attempts or have the ball in my hand every time down the floor, but um, just being super effective when I get it um making the right play making the simple play and um the beauty about the nba is if you don't you know if you don't freak out like the the read is gonna show itself to you so um just you know with the experience comes more um seeing different things and um i've been able to you know kind of slow down and and make the right reads you know more times than not and 
Oh, it's like a good thing. Heavy crowds like the ups and downs, uh, and had your discussion of Duke for a rookie. Mm -hmm. um, what was uh, the biggest, the toughest down that you had to overcome for the last four months? Yeah, uh, there's a couple games where um, traveled out to the, that West Coast trip. Um, traveled out to you know we did Denver and Utah and Sacramento I mean I, I didn't and I didn't play in Sacramento and Utah and I had a lot of family and friends you know come to those games and um, when you have people coming to those, your games you want to do well and you want to um, perform and put on a show and of course you know family loves you unconditionally so whether I play a minute or not you know they're gonna be proud of me uh, but you know just not playing in those games and and knowing how much effort it takes for my family to get out to those games and and watch um you know i wanted to make it special for them and that was super tough so um you know yeah a long uh flight back from that utah game especially and you know but you know thankfully things have kind of turned around and um you know i didn't let that you know keep me down it's all that's what's you know most important is when you find yourself kind of in a low you you're working to uh, get yourself out of it coming in here yeah honestly coming in here um you know thankfully we have such a great performance staff that you know works with you no matter what and is in your corner no matter what so just because you're down on yourself doesn't mean they are and you know um you know getting a ton of reps and feeling good about your game all over again kind of lifts you out of that a little bit and then you know the family that does come to those games is you know always in your corner so um, talking with the people that knew you before you became an NBA player and know you for who you are um, kind of reminds you, you know, what life is really all about. How do you think Rui is assimilated to the top? Reminiscent of the Zabi that he's had? Uh, no, not, not quite. I mean, he's, he's has spent a lot of time off and, you know, it's not going to come back immediately to anybody. But, I mean, you saw flashes of it over the last couple of games where he's made some really, really good plays and, um, he's a great player and so he's going to figure it out and you know we have all have trust in Rui and we're excited to see you know those big leaps and steps that he's going to make over the next uh, couple of days. Is that much of a chance to, to see anything of DT? I know it's tough, it's tough as heck given that all of you know, the world is on fire and just, you know that you can't really go out and see much but yeah, yeah. So at the beginning of the year, I had a good stretch of time where I had a lot of visitors come into town. Um, and, you know, people that I know from my childhood are coming from the West Coast and have never been to D.C. So doing all the classic stuff is um, has been pretty fun for me as well as, as, well as them. So um, getting to do that, I, have, I mean, I haven't scratched the surface of what D.C. has to offer yet. There's so much to do, but um, I've done all the really basic touristy stuff and um, it's been great. Yeah, working on it. All right, Corey, we'll transition over to Zoom for a few questions. We'll start with Neil. Hey, Corey, I'm curious just what the kind of focus has been on practice. You know, a lot of guys have talked about just consistency and, you know, trying to get that moving forward. Yeah, that's exactly what it's been. And I don't want to, I hate to repeat what other guys have been saying, but um, we've had this habit of, you know, taking, you know, two steps forward and taking one step back and kind of feeling like we're doing really well and we're making some good strides. And then we, you know, uh, have a bad game or, you know, take another step back or whatever. And um, so it's all about building those good days and stacking them on top of each other. And, um, you know, we had, we had a really, really good team effort last night. And the biggest thing for tomorrow is to build on that and not, you know, take that step back like we've had the habit of doing um, for the beginning part of the year. Thanks, Corey. We'll go over to Christos. Hey, Corey. Hope you're doing well. Uh, how how good do you describe the the consistency of your team in the last uh, five game stretch? And how for you is to have that role and be on both ends of the. Christos, could you repeat the last part of your question? I didn't catch that. Uh, you hear me? 
I just I got the consistency over the last five games, but I didn't yeah. catch the last part of the question. Okay, how important for you is to to be impactful on both ends with that role that you have uh, in that game stretch in those last five games for your team? Yeah, well, the team has been great over the last five. I mean, we've been playing together, um, moving the ball, sharing it, and you know, doing doing a really good job on defense. And um, you know, it's just what you like to see um, when we play as a team. We play together. We have more than enough weapons to compete with anybody. And then for me personally, I kind of mentioned it earlier, just keeping it simple and, you know, filling in the cracks where I can, you know, where I can, um, you know, I know exactly where the ball needs to go on the majority of possessions. And that's the guys who um, have been here a long time and have been to all-star games and, you know, have played in big games and stuff like that. But um, when the ball hits my hands, I'm open, I need to shoot it. And that's what the team, you know, needs for me. And, um, you know, I've been able to do that recently. What was it like uh, getting cleared and, and returning and being able to play? Uh, it was a process. Um, it was uh, it's definitely a weird one at that, you know, from a few weeks ago being inconclusive and not actually testing positive at all and missing three games. And then now this time around inconclusive and then tested positive and still missed three games. So it was, it's, uh, it's tough to kind of grasp our protocol system. But um, I mean, at the same time, we're doing the best we can and um, you know, the biggest thing is making sure everybody's safe and we're trying to do that the best best we possibly can. Um, but everything is good. My family's good. Nobody else contracted it, which is, you know, a great positive. And um, I didn't have any symptoms besides sleeping a lot. So, um, which helped me too, because I was a little energetic yesterday. So there's nothing wrong with some rest, but I'm good. I feel good. Body feels good. Um, no respiratory problems. So blessed. Uh, for one, I mean, it's tough with COVID because there are, you know, people who are affected, you know, respiratory wise, like my, my buddy, Jason, he's, he's had it a few times and it's affected him, you know? So, um, I get that, that part, that portion of it. And even when I was coming back to play, um, last time, like I wanted to take like a practice day, I wanted like a warm up day or something to get going. Cause you lose, you lose a little bit of win, you know, those three or four days, you don't do anything. It's not like being hurt where you're rehabbing, you're still getting some type of movement and functionality, but you're literally doing nothing. You know, you're just resting and, you know, trying to, trying to get out of the, you know, the negative, I mean, the positive aspect of, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, but um, at the same time, it's, it's a process, you know, you just, you try to do what you can and you embrace, embrace what you can. And, you know, there's other learn other ways of learning the game and getting better watching film and, um, things of that nature, but, you know, eventually, you know, when you're think about four to five days into it, you're able to start working out. So it's a gradual, it's always going to be a gradual increase in, in your coming back to play. So it's always a precautionary thing, but, um, I mean, I feel good. And I think we, we managed our minutes well yesterday. Was the second time you had to wait that time period? Was that more frustrating than the first? Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um, even, though, even when I had it, I mean, granted, I did, wasn't like I, wasn't like the last time where I'm like, well, I, I can be around the guys. Like, I don't have it, you know. But um, this time around, it's like, okay, you do have COVID. And it's like, you really can't do anything about it. And it's frustrating, you know. Then you have to – it's predicated on your numbers, you know. So you're watching your numbers every day. Do they go up? Do they go down? And that's – it's a hassle. Um, but, you know, we, we're doing everything. We're taking the necessary steps, you know, for our league. Um, but, you know, it's good to be back. And uh, I'm glad I don't have to test for 60 days now. So. Is like you guys had. I know there are assistants on the staff, but is it like as players, do you ever get used to a new voice when it's temporary? Or is it kind of like you tell the difference in changing with the message? Uh, yes and no. You know, because a lot of coaches, assistant coaches, when they had the opportunity to step up into the role, they, they audition for it. You know, they think because it's their opportunity to show that they can take on that task and lead a team. Um, so in a way there are some differences of personalities, but at the same time, the voice is always coming from Wes. You know, we already, we we'll always hear his message within, you know, from Pat and from JB, like you still hear Wes's message. Um, but they all have their different styles. They all have different, you know, tangibles about themselves that they, you know, they implicate and, uh, that they push towards us as a team, but, uh, it's not like a big adjustment that you have to make mentally now. Uh, I mean, we develop these relationships every day, so they should, 
Um, it should they should be second nature when someone else steps up. And I know the virus affects everyone, but what do you make of the half the league's coaches now under protocol? It's crazy, right? Um, I don't know, man. We just don't understand it. You know, I think that's um, that's pretty much all we can kind of pinpoint. You know, we we're going, we're all doing. What's necessary, you know, everybody's getting vaccinated, everybody's getting a booster, everybody's, we're wearing masks, you know, maybe we need to go back to a little bit more space on the benches and you no know, people behind us or whatever, but, you know, it's, I think we're doing everything we, we possibly can, you know, um, without trying to kind of stick everybody in a box or a bubble again. Um, so it's tough, you know, it's just kind of like players, the next man up mentality, you know, we have, Granted, that's why you got a few few coaches on your staff and some player development guys who it's another opportunity for them to showcase what they can do. So it's kind of it's a it's unfortunate in some ways, but it's also fortunate for a lot of guys and coaches, you know, to take take advantage of opportunities. G League guys coming up to play, coaches getting opportunities to coach. Yeah, like depending on where you're sitting too, depending on the city, you know, some fans aren't masked or anything like that. Like, does that worry you? Or... I never really paid any mind on that. I mean, I probably should <laughs> uh but i haven't i haven't really paid any any attention to that you know that probably could have a big impact granted i guess proximity being able to touch fans and players or whatnot but i don't know i think we'll probably address it as a league um come all star break at our at our meeting um but you know we we love the fans we embrace the fans you know it's kind of it's gonna be tough to put them in a box too about Rui and PD being back and playing as well as they did yesterday. It is so great to see both of them back. One, seeing Rui, um, you know, when he first stepped onto the floor, it was it was a happy moment for me. You know, just I was just happy that he's back into doing what he wants to do in his time. You know, nobody forced him, nobody rushed him. Um, and he looks fine. He looks good. You know, he's hooping. Um, and obviously, he's he's learning his teammates, and we're learning him. And a lot of guys are learning him on the fly. Um, and then TV, he's like, he just picked up right where he left off. Like, he's, you know, he's always energy. He's always going to be aggressive. You know, he's always going to be loud out there. He's always going to be um, vocal and play hard. You know, that's that's what you can always expect out of him. And he gave us he was great minutes yesterday. You know, he competed his tail off. And Rui's just going to continue to get better and better. You know, his, his game is developing. You know, his versatility is there. You know, he's constantly working on his ball handling. You know, we don't know if he's three, if he's a four, you know, and it's going to be tough. You know, we're trying to mix him in between the two. But, um, you know, he's handling it well. You know, he's learning a lot of stuff, a whole new system on the fly. Um, but I've I've been impressed with him. You know, he's only going to continue to get better. You know, it's just great that he's around us and, um, he's continuing to embrace his basketball joy. Speaking of that, now that you've had a couple games with everybody back, what do you make of the balance of this roster as a whole? Um, how work together personnel-wise and on court? I'm glad I'm not the coach, <laughs> you know? Um, and, you know, I say that in a competitive and respectful way, you know, because I understand as a teammate, you know, there are going to be guys who don't get to play. You know, there's going to be guys who don't get minutes, and guys who feel like they deserve them. And coach has to make a tough call and a tough decision if he wants to. How many guys one he wants to play? How many minutes you're going to get? What are the rotations? What your role is? You know, everything is going to be. It's going to be a little tougher, um, but it's like a blessing in disguise to have. It's like good problems. Drew Gooden always tells me I have good problems. Like this is a good problem to have. You know, we have so much depth, versatility, age position. You know, um, that we can survey different lineups, survey different, you know, groups of guys and see how they work in jail. Um, but on the flip side of it, you know, it may mean that some guys may not play, some guys you may move on from, some guys just might not just get the opportunity, you know, or their opportunity is just a little shorter than the next guy. Um, so it's it's a competitive thing in our league. You know, that's that's what we should want as players. You know, um, I think Wes said it before. He's like, I don't want you if you're not mad that you don't play. You know, and I think that's a great message because if you don't give a damn about playing, then you shouldn't be here. Like, if you're just cool with sitting down, then you shouldn't be here. You know, so I think that's a that's a great message, you know, to, to push out and receive too, you know, from a coach, you know, on that 
like, yeah, I'm going to play the best guy and I'm going to play who I think is best for the team, you know, and it's a competitive thing. It's nothing personal. Um, you know, it's a, to push to you for, you know, everybody to work on their game, get better and show coach what they can do. So it's, uh, it's going to be a challenge. It won't be easy, but I play. I don't, I don't, I don't make the decisions. <laughs> What needs to, to happen for your team to play with the, the sharpness, the, the energy it had this year? I'm not saying win by 20 points every game. That's not. Shit, sure. I wish. Um, uh, that's that's what we got to find, you know? And I think that's kind of something we've been saying all year is what's sustainable for us? What are the Wizards? What's a sustainable way of winning for the Wizards, you know? Um, what's consistent, you know? Um, and, it's tough now because now you look at the beginning of the year, how we started, and then you know we started off great and sluggish, and now we have like a whole new team. So it's kind of like almost three seasons already in one, um, in a way. And so now we're we're a full team and we're dissecting. Okay, who should we be? You know, what kind of team are we? Uh, you know, so you definitely elaborate what TB is able to bring: his energy, his physicality, his ability to stretch the floor. Um, you know, so are we a fast-paced playing team? We're always a defensive-minded team. You know, that's first and foremost. You know, we need to be physical, defensive-minded. Um, you know, then offensively, we have so much versatility. It's how do we utilize all of our weapons um, and get the best and magnify and magnetize everybody's potential. You know, um, and that's what that's what, again. That's why I'm the player, not the coach. Uh, but it's it's going to be. It's a challenge. It is a challenge. I'd be lying if I said it was it was something easy to figure out. Winning isn't easy, you know. So uh, I think the biggest thing is is consistency. How do we, like you said, bring that same attitude and approach night in and night out? Not just because we're playing Joel, you know. And it's going to be a challenge with Philly. You know, we're going to have a challenge tomorrow. We're going to have a challenge Saturday, Friday, um, and so on. So uh, I think part of it is understanding what type of team we are, who we can be. Understanding what we're a game, two out of six, a little higher. So, I mean, it's right there. And it's just a matter of us kind of being more confident, realizing who we are, uh, and, and pushing ourselves to be better night in and night out. And it starts defensively, always. With my stuff to catch him against Philly, like that's what we do a lot in playoff. Like, can you, I guess maybe like the talent difference is a little more. See more when you face it. From last year to this year? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's totally different. Uh, it's tough because I didn't have Matisse hounding me all night last night. So I can't, you know, that's my guy. And I know how he feels from playing. Each, when we play each other, it's always fun and competitive. So from that standpoint, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that it was easier, that, you know, it was, it was, I guess, kind of worked in our favor. But you know, they didn't have shape. They didn't have, you know, a few other guys, you know, who were key pieces to the team. So that's tough to, to judge and in, in, in some ways, but at the same time to see our approach. And granted, we're a different team. I think we're, we're a much better team. Um, but to see our approach and our attitude towards it, like granted, Joel has been kicking everybody's tail this year. But, you know, we did a better job of not fouling him in the second half, right? And I think our adjustments that we made and made on the fly this is probably the best game that we've done that. Um, and granted, it's only going to get tougher, you know, and granted, we get we get a blessing tomorrow in some ways, and we don't have to deal with a three-headed monster, but we still got two of them that we have to, that we still have to try to keep under control, which is not an easy task. Um, you know, so the other night it was bigs having to take on the physicality. Now we got us guards. We got to step up tomorrow. Um, so every night is going to be tough. Um, and we just got to motivate and push each other to do it. Realize, like I said, what type of team we can be. We can be an elite team and we just got to believe it. What do you think about uh, the fact that JB plays for the Harlem Club Cutters? We've been asking yeah. a lot of questions about that. I saw some tricks after the game. <laughs> yeah. uh, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I think it's cool. I think it's very unique. Um, I think if you understood the history of the Globe Trotters, um, I think it's, it's definitely it's a unique thing for him to do. Um, and then see his journey of basketball, you know, from being drafted, playing the Globe Trotters, playing overseas for a few years. Um, you know, he knows the game. He's been around the game. Um, you know, a lot of us think the Globe Trotters is something like just 
it's funny guys that know how to do tricks, but you know, he knows the game. Like there are actual basketball players who work globe shots. So um, you know, you respect that um from him and you know that's an awesome thing to have on your resume, you know. That's a great question. Thank you. I don't want to be in the playing game. Yeah. I, I do not want to be in the playing game. Um, I feel like we're better than that. And there's no knocking on the playing game. So it gives you another chance to get in. But I think we, we can be we can be we can be better than that. I think we can be better than that. And you know, the opportunities are in front of us. And we have a less than 40 games, I think, now. Maybe right at right at forty, um, you know, to to be able to turn around and do it, you know. Um, but I don't want to be in a plan. I'll leave it at that. I can't be in a plan. Can't be a plan team. Brad, uh, you mentioned really learning on the fly, um, but for this new system, how difficult is it to learn this system mm. in season as opposed to during training? Oh, it's tough. I'd be lying if I if I said it was easy. You know, and that's why I'd, I applaud him for sure because. Uh, at the end of the day, like I said, he's doing everything within his time and his realm, you know, so when he feels comfortable playing basketball, he does that. Uh, it's our job to make his transition into it easier, you know, um, with helping him with simplifying plays. What plays does he like? Uh, what are some of our go tos? What do we run more frequently that he knows and he can just grasp quickly um, and learn on the fly? You know, it's, and he has a totally different role than what he did last year, he has a totally different staff than he did last year. So all this stuff is going to be tough for him. Um, I'm pretty sure it is from um, initially, but at the same time, Wes does a good job of adapting, you know, to the players that he has, you know, and putting us in, in good positions to succeed on the floor. Um, so his opportunities are going to continue to grow. And once I think coach learns him and learns more about what he loves and what he's capable of doing, I think he'll be, he'll be very fruitful for our team for sure. Yeah. All right, Brad, we have time for two questions from zoom. We'll start with Neil and we'll finish up with Christos. Hey, Brad, um, I'm not sure how, when you got COVID, when you were in the protocols, affects your ability to get the vaccine, the second shot or not. But do you, does this positive test exempt you from the February 15th deadline to be fully vaccinated? No, I don't know. I, <laughs> I have no idea. What's, what's February 15th? There's a deadline? What? The January 15th was one shot. February 15th is fully vaccinated. Is that a city mandate? Correct. Uh, you see how much I pay attention to the Fair outside enough. world. Here. Uh, I don't know if that plays a factor into it. I would have to ask our team docs because I know, I know they have a rule like once you contract COVID, you can't get the shot after a certain amount of days. So I don't know. I hope everything is all right in that, in that sense. Fair enough. Glad that you and your family are healthy again. Thank you, brother. And we'll finish up with Christos. Hey, Brad, how are you? My man. Uh, well, to see players like Corey Kispert made a step up on the floor, Danny Avdia made a step up into a more important role on defense. What did you say about the depth of that group, the potential wise, and how easy you make your game? with those two guys on the floor. Who who would you say? Corey Kispert and uh, Denny Avdia. Corey and Kispert. Oh, nice. Uh, Corey is our shooter. And I get mad when Corey don't shoot the ball. Um, but Corey is, Corey is excellent. You know, he played, what, three, four years? Corey, Corey played all four in college? Mm -hmm. yeah. Corey's a four-year player. So he's kind of – he's a mature rookie. You know, he's not just like a young guy, that, you know, uh, you know, it's learning like the game is just super fast for him. Like he, it's moving a little slow for him. Like granted, it's still fast because it's a different pace and different game, different style. But he's able to adapt very quickly. You know, he's very mature. Uh, you know, he's a willing learner. And Denny's the same way, but Denny's a little. He's younger than than, than Corey, so it's kind of flipped. You know, but Denny's a willing learner. Denny, Denny wants to get better, and I think his versatility is you know one of his greatest attributes. You know, because you he can play guard, he can play forward. He's shown that he can defend um, and guard his position, guard multiple positions. Uh, you know, so the sky is really the limit for both of them, you know, to continue to, uh, you know, one, earn minutes, 
you know, showcase what they can do. And I always say, you know, it's, it's just your career you're in control of, you know. Uh, so they have, granted, they, they're in a great position to where they have plenty of opportunities to play, you know, showcase what they can do, contribute to the team. Um, I think they, they both handle it really well um, and take full advantage of the opportunities they're given. It's just only going to continue to get better. The game will slow down for them both. Um, as they mature and get and continue to watch film, continue to play the game and play against guys over and over and over again, uh, the game will slow down for them. Uh, so I'm excited for for both of them in that standpoint because Denny, Denny's a guy. He's always he reminds me of myself when I was younger. He's always pressing. He's always down on himself. He's always you know he wants to be better. He wants to be the best he can be. Um, so I love that mentality of him. You know he has the work ethic. He has the mentality. Um, we just all got to put it together for him. You know it's just a matter of time for it is.